In the present module, we move on to discuss and elaborate on other production related concepts. We will discuss production exhaustion theorem which had some problems and solution to which was provided by Wickstead in the form of Euler's theorem. The theorem further received criticism. We will also discuss the concept of technical progress and its impact on the production function. We end the module by discussing production possibility curves, ISO revenue lines and condition for optimum combination for the firm. After starting this module, you shall be able to know the concept of product exhaustion theorem and how it was solved by Wickstead using Euler's theorem. Why technical progress is essential for growth. Technical progress classification and its importance. Distinction between Hicks and Harrod concept of technical progress. Multi-product firm and its operation. First, we will discuss the product exhaustion theorem. The production exhaustion theorem states that if all the factors of production are paid equal to their marginal products, they will exhaust the total product. As soon as it was brought forward that all the factors of production are paid equal to their marginal products, a difficult problem cropped up over which raised a serious debate among the economists. The difficult problem that has been put forward was that if all factors were paid equal to their marginal products, would the total product be just exactly exhausted? The problem of proving that if all factors are paid rewards equal to their marginal products, they will exhaust the total product has been called adding up problem or product exhaustion problem. Philip Wickstead was the first economist who not only posed this problem but also provided a solution for it. Now let us discuss the solution of product exhaustion theorem. The three solutions proposed for the problem of product exhaustion theorem were Philip Wickstead solution Euler's theorem Wicksell, Walrus and Varun solution, J.R. Hicks and R.A. Samuelson perfect competition model. Let us study these solutions in detail. First is Philip Wickstead solution Euler's theorem. Philip Wickstead was the first economist who proposed this problem and provided a solution using Euler's theorem. Euler's theorem is a mathematical proposition which states that if a production function is homogeneous of degree 1 that is constant returns to scale and the factors are paid equal to their marginal products the total product is exhausted with no surplus and deficit. Euler's theorem Euler's theorem was developed by Swiss mathematician Leonhard Euler According to him, it is a mathematical relationship that applies to any homogeneous function. A function fx is said to be homogeneous of degree t scalar if and only if for function of lambda x is equal to lambda raised to the power t fx for all lambda is greater than 0 and x is equal to x1, x2, Till xn. Here t is the parameter of returns to scale. If the function fx is homogeneous of degree alpha is equal to 1, the function exhibits constant returns to scale. If alpha is greater than 1, the function exhibits increasing returns to scale. If alpha is less than 1, the function exhibits decreasing returns to scale. Let fx be a production function with two factors of production of capital and labor, then the homogeneous production function of degree t can be mathematically expressed as lambda t into y is equal to function of lambda k lambda l, where y is output 
K is capital, L is labor, T is parameter of returns to scale. If T is equal to 1, the function exhibits constant returns to scale. If T is greater than 1, the function exhibits increasing returns to scale. If T less than 1, the function exhibits decreasing returns to scale. If production function is homogeneous of degree T, then the marginal rate of technical substitution is constant along rays extending from the origin and the derived cost function from the corresponding production function is homogeneous of degree 1 upon alpha. The theorem says that for a homogeneous function fx of degree t, then for all x, x1 into delta fx upon delta x1 plus x2 into delta fx upon delta x2 plus x3 into delta fx upon delta x3 plus till xn into delta fx upon delta xn is equal to t into fx. Proof. For a homogeneous function fx of degree t, differentiation f lambda x upon differentiation lambda is equal to x1 into differentiation f lambda x upon delta lambda x1 plus x2 into differentiation f lambda x upon delta lambda x2 plus x3 differentiation of f lambda x upon delta lambda x3 plus till xn into differentiation f lambda x upon delta lambda xn differentiation lambda raised to the power t fx upon differentiation t is equal to t into lambda raised to the power t minus 1 fx if setting lambda is equal to 1 the theorem follows let us move on to discuss euler's theorem and production function it is based on some postulations these are it assumes a linear standardized production of first degree which implies invariable returns to scale. It assumes that the factors are complementary that is if a variable factor increases it increases the marginal productivity of the fixed factor. It assumes that factors of production are perfectly divisible. The relative shares of the factors are invariable and independent of the level of the product. There is a stationary, reckless economy where there are no profits. There is perfect competition. It is applicable only in the long run. Let us assume that the production function is homogeneous of degree 1. The homogeneous production function of the first degree can be written as lambda y is equal to function of lambda k lambda l and the Euler's theorem can be written as y is equal to k into delta y upon delta k plus l into delta y upon delta l where y is equal to output, k is equal to capital, l is equal to labor, delta y upon delta k marginal product of capital delta y upon delta l marginal product of labor marginal product of capital is the addition to the total output attributable to addition of one more unit of capital it is calculated by partially differentiating output with respect to capital keeping labor constant similarly marginal product of labor is the addition to the total output attributable to addition of one more unit of labor. It is calculated by partially differentiating output with respect to labor keeping capital constant. Euler theorem states that the marginal product of capital multiplied by the amount of capital plus the marginal product of labor multiplied by the amount of labor equals to the total product of the firm. Let us take the Cobb Douglas production function. Y is a function of K L A is equal to A Q 
k raised to the power alpha l raised to the power 1 minus alpha mpk is equal to delta y upon delta k is equal to a alpha k raised to the power alpha minus 1 l raised to the power 1 minus alpha is equal to a alpha k upon l raised to the power alpha minus 1 mpl is equal to delta y upon delta l is equal to a 1 minus alpha k raised to the power alpha l raised to the power minus alpha is equal to a 1 minus alpha k upon l raised to the power alpha putting the values in euler's theorem y is equal to k mpk plus l into mpl we get y is equal to a alpha k raised to the power alpha minus 1 l raised to the power 1 minus alpha plus l a 1 minus alpha k raised to the power alpha l raised to the power minus alpha y is equal to a alpha k raised to the power alpha l raised to the power 1 minus alpha plus a 1 minus alpha k raised to the power alpha l raised to the power 1 minus alpha y is equal to a k raised to the power alpha l raised to the power 1 minus alpha if production function is homogeneous of degree 1 then marginal products are homogeneous of degree 0 y is equal to k into mpk plus l into mpl or k into fk plus l into fl differentiate with respect to k k into fkk plus l into f lk plus fk is equal to fk k into fkk plus l into f lk is equal to 0 fk is equal to 0 similarly the same is true for labor we have seen that wickstead is able to explain the product exertion theorem with the help of euler's theorem when production function exhibits constant returns to scale wickstead proved that if all the factors are paid equal to their marginal products the total product will be exhausted now we will elaborate wickstead solution and criticism first drawback of wickstead solution wickstead was able to explain the product exhaustion theorem with the help of euler's theorem but this solution was criticized by walrus edgeworth baron and pareto according to them returns to scale are not constant in real world that is production function is not homogeneous of degree 1 the edgeworth commented on the wickstead solution that there is a magnificence in this generalization which recalls the youth of philosophy justice is a perfect cube said the ancient sage and rational conduct is homogeneous function adds the modern savant economics pointed out that production function is such that it yields long run average cost curve which is of u shaped lac curve is also known as envelope curve as it envelops short run average cost curves the long run average cost curve is u shaped that is it initially falls reaches a minimum and rises thereafter initially the long run average cost of production falls as output increases because of increasing returns to scale and then rises beyond certain level of output because of decreasing returns to scale so if a firm is working with increasing returns to scale and factors are paid equal to their marginal products the total factor reward would exceed the total product and similarly if a firm is working with decreasing returns to scale and factors are paid equal to their marginal products the total factor reward will not fully exhaust the total product as the total factor reward is less than the total product it will result in surplus 
Euler's theorem does not apply when firms are working with either increasing returns to scale or decreasing returns to scale. Second drawback of Wickstead solution. If production function exhibits constant returns to scale, then the shape of the long run average cost curve would be horizontal straight line parallel to x axis. The horizontal straight line shape of the long run average cost is not compatible with the perfect competitive market structure as firm would not be able to determine the equilibrium position. Next we discuss Wicksell, Walrus and Veron's solution to product exertion problem. After Wicksted, the more satisfactory solution to the problem of product exhaustion theorem was provided independently by Wicksell, Biron and Walrus. They assumed that the production function was not homogeneous of degree 1. The production function was such that it yields long run average cost curve to be of U shape. They pointed out the applicability of the product exhaustion theorem in long run in perfect competition market. In perfect competition market, the industry is in equilibrium in the long run when all the firms are in equilibrium and producing a price which is equal to minimum of long run average cost. In long run, all the firms are earning zero economic profit and no firm has an incentive to enter or leave an industry. Thus, the condition required for the product exhaustion theorem that is production function exhibits constant returns to scale was fulfilled at the minimum point on the long run average cost curve where returns to scale are constant within the range of small variations of output. So under perfectly competitive long run equilibrium if factors are paid rewards equal to their marginal product, the total product would be exactly exhausted. But as all production functions are not linear homogeneous, the controversy remained unresolved. It does not make any difference whether we are under perfectly competitive market structure and dealing with usual U-shaped long run average cost curve the controversy remained unresolved. Hicks and Simelson resolved this controversy and showed that the solution of the product exhaustion theorem depends not on the property of production function but on the market conditions of the perfect competition. In perfect competition market structure, firms are earning zero economic profits. Thus, the solution to product exhaustion problem in case of perfectly competitive factor markets where factors are paid equal to their marginal products, the existence of perfect competition in the product market will ensure zero economic profits in the long run. The figure shows long run equilibrium in perfect competition market structure where firms are earning zero economic profits. The zero economic profit condition under perfect competition can also be explained mathematically. The zero economic profit condition implies that value of total output is equal to the total cost of production. Let capital K and labor L be the two factors of production used by perfectly competitive firm to produce output Q. Let P be the price of the product. The value of output is AR multiplied by the output. And total cost is the sum of the amount spent on each to produce a given level of output. So, zero economic profit value of output is equal to total cost. P into Q is equal to L into W plus K into R equation 1. According to marginal productivity theory, each factor is paid equal to the value of their marginal products. Thus, W is equal to V M P L is equal to P X M P P L. R is equal to V M P K is equal to 
Px Mp Pk, where Vmp is the value of marginal product. Now substitute these values of R and W in equation one. We get P into Q is equal to L into P into MPPL plus K into P into MPPK. It shows that for a given price, if the factors are paid equal to their marginal physical product, the total payments to factors would be equal to the total product Q, and thus total product will be exactly exhausted. Let us now discuss technical progress. Technical progress is defined as improvement in technology. In other words, technical progress means. More output can be produced from the same amount of factor inputs, or same output can be produced by smaller amount of one or more of the factor inputs, or any qualitative improvement in the existing product or production of entirely new products. Technical progress is the most important factor in determining the rate of growth of the economy. Technical progress and production function. The technical progress can be represented with the help of production function. Here we are making use of per worker production function. The assumption of constant returns to scale permits us to write an aggregate production function into a per worker form. Y is a function of K L equation one. If we multiply capital and labor by any constant lambda, then output is also multiplied by the same number. That is, lambda y is equal to function of lambda k lambda l. Let us put lambda is equal to one upon l. Then y upon l is a function of k upon l and one. Equation two, where y upon l is output per worker and K upon L is capital labor ratio. Let y is equal to y upon L and k is equal to k upon L. Then equation two can be written as y is a function of k is equal to function of k upon L one equation three. This is the per worker form of the production function where output per worker depends upon capital per worker. If there is no usage of inputs, output would be zero. That is, y is equal to function of k. If k is zero, then y is equal to zero. It ensures that the per worker production function starts from the origin. Let us now see diagrammatic representation of per worker production function. In the figure, the k upon l ratio is measured on x-axis and y upon l ratio on y-axis. The curve starts from the origin as output is zero when no factor is employed. The output per worker is increasing but at a diminishing rate as the ratio k upon l ratio rises. Technical progress shifts the production function upward. The technical progress shifts the production function upward. It is shown in the figure. The production function without any technical progress is shown by curve F K T zero. After the technical progress, the curve shifts upward to F K T one. At any level of K upon L ratio on the new production function except zero, more output per worker is produced. Let us discuss factor augmenting representation of technical change. Technical progress shifts the production function upward such that more output is produced with the same quantity of factors. That is, without any increase in the usage of capital and labor. If the factors of production had been augmented, then the production function can be written as y is equal to function of A T K and C T L. Y is equal to function of A T K and C T L, where Y is output, K is capital, L is labor, T is time. A and C are factors. A T K is effective capital. C T L is effective labor. 
Here, the capital and labor force are multiplied by factors A and C, which are functions of time. If AT is greater than zero, that is, the rate of change is positive, then effective capital stock increases as time goes on, even though the actual capital stock remains constant. If CT is greater than zero, that is, the rate of change is positive, then effective labor stock increases as time goes on even though the actual labor stock remains constant. The technical change can be characterized as purely capital augmenting. The technical change is said to be purely capital augmented if AT is positive and CT is equal to 1, that is AT greater than 0 and CT is equal to 1. Purely labor augmenting. The technical change is said to be purely labor augmented if CT is positive and AT is equal to 1. That is CT greater than 0 and AT is equal to 1. Equally capital and labor augmenting. The technical change is said to be equally capital and labor augmented if AT and CT both are positive. Classification of technical progress. The classification of technical progress as labor saving, capital saving or neutral was originally the work of Harrod 1948 and Hicks 1932 and there exist differences in the criteria of classification. Harrod employs the concept of capital output ration to explain technical progress classification whereas Hicks used the concept of marginal rate of substitution between factors leaving output unchanged. Let us study them in detail. First is the Hicks classification of technical progress. Classification in terms of marginal product ratio. The technical progress is said to be labor saving if MPKT upon MPLT is greater than MPK0 upon MPL0 or any technical progress resulting in upward shift in the production function is said to be labor saving. If any constant value of the capital labor ratio, the ratio of MPK to MPL has increased. Here, MPKT and MPLT are the marginal products before the technical progress and MPK0 and MPL0 after the technical progress. The technical progress is said to be capital saving if MPKT upon MPLT is less than MPK0 upon MPL0 or any technical progress resulting in upward shift in the production function is said to be labor saving if any constant value of the capital labor ratio, the ratio of MPK to MPL has decreased. The technical progress is said to be Hicks neutral if MPKT upon MPLT is equal to MPK0 upon MPL0 or any technical progress resulting in upward shift in the production function is said to be labor saving if any constant value of the capital labor ratio, the ratio of MPK to MPL has remained constant. Classification in terms of ratio of relative shares. The technical progress is said to be labor saving if at any constant value of capital labor ratio, the ratio of relative shares that is RK upon WL is increasing. The technical progress is said to be capital saving if at any constant value of capital labor ratio, the ratio of relative shares that is RK upon WL is decreasing. The technical progress is said to be Hicks neutral if at any constant value of capital labor ratio, the ratio of relative shares that is RK upon WL remains constant. Second is Harrod classification of technical progress. Any technical progress resulting in upward shift in the production function is said to be labor saving if any constant value of the capital output ratio, the MPK is increasing. In other words, technical progress is said to be labor saving if at 
any constant value of capital output ratio, the ratio of relative shares that is RK upon WL is increasing. Any technical progress resulting in upward shift in the production function is said to be capital saving if any constant value of the capital output ratio, the MPK is decreasing. In other words, technical progress is said to be capital saving if at any constant value of capital output ratio, the ratio of relative shares that is RK upon WL is decreasing. Any technical progress resulting in upward shift in the production function is said to be harrowed neutral if any constant value of the capital output ratio, the MPK remains unchanged. In other words, technical progress is said to be harrowed neutral if at any constant value of capital output ratio, the ratio of relative shares that is RK upon WL remains constant. Multi-product firms are firms that are producing more than one good. As multi-product firms are dealing with multiple products, they have to deal with allocating inputs more properly in order to obtain higher level of output. This is a greater problem than the one single product firms face, the maximization of profit problem. Since multi-product firms must allocate their factors not only to produce one good but multiple goods. The production analysis can be extended to include multi-product firms. There is a possibility that two products can be jointly produced in varying proportions by a single production process. In case of joint products, production of two or more products is technically dependent on each other. This we can explain with the help of production possibility curve. The next topic we discuss is production possibility curve. A production possibility curve, PPC, sometimes called production possibility frontier or transformation curve is a curve which shows different possibilities of two goods that can be produced with the available resources and given technology. We know that resources are very much limited and have alternative uses. Suppose a firm decides to produce two goods that are rice and cloth. More of cloth the firm produces, the less of rice it would be able to produce. So by utilizing more resources in the production of cloth means the lesser resources would be available for the production of rice and vice versa. Assumptions on which production possibility curve is based are the amount of productive resources is given and remain fixed. That is resources can be shifted from the production of one good to another. Resources are neither unemployed nor underemployed but utilized efficiently. Economy is working at full employment level and trying to achieve maximum possible level of production. There is no change in technology. Production possibility curve is a curve which shows different possibilities of two goods that can be produced with the available resource and given technology. In the figure, rice is measured on x-axis and cloth on y-axis. On one extreme, we are utilizing all our resources in the production of cloth and on other extreme, we are utilizing all our resources in the production of rice alone. Between these two extreme points, there are many possibilities of rice and cloth which a firm can produce. By joining all production possibilities point, we derive production possibility curve. It is also known as production possibility boundary. All the points within and on boundary of production possibility curve are attainable combinations. All the points on production possibility boundary represent efficient utilization of resources. It implies that production of one good can be increased only by decreasing the resources from the production of other good. All the points within the production possibility curve represent inefficient utilization of resources. Thus, 
resources remain underutilized inside the production boundary the production possibility curve is negatively sloped and bowed outward in short as larger and larger quantities of resources are transferred from the production of one output to another the addition to the production of second product declines the slope of production possibility curve is known as marginal opportunity cost the marginal opportunity cost refers to the loss of good y that we need to sacrifice in order to produce one more unit of good x marginal opportunity cost is equal to slope of ppc is equal to delta y upon delta x as we are moving from left to right on production possibility curve its slope increases the increasing slope implies that when we are withdrawing resources from the production of y to produce more and more of good x the loss of output of good y for each additional unit of good x tends to increase next topic is iso revenue lines an iso revenue is defined as the locus of product combinations that will earn the same revenue in other words all the combinations of rice and cloth lying on this line give the same revenue when sold in the market at any given fixed prices the iso revenue line would be a straight line higher the iso revenue line higher is the revenue earned by selling larger combination of two goods for a given fixed price the iso revenue lines are parallel to one another the slope of the iso revenue line is equal to the ratio of price of the product slope of the iso revenue line is equal to px upon py where px is the price of good x and py is the price of good y so lastly we discuss optimum combination the aim of the producer is to maximize profit the revenue would be maximized when given production possibility curve is tangent to iso revenue line at this point the marginal rate of transformation that is the slope of the production possibility curve is equal to the ratio of prices of commodities x and commodity y px upon py is equal to mrt xy and the second condition required for optimum combination of two products is that production possibility curve must be concave from below let us summarize what we have discussed in this module we have seen under product exhaustion theorem that when all the factors are paid equal to their marginal products the total product is exactly exhausted the solution to this problem was provided by wickstead with the help of euler's theorem technical progress is the most important determinant of economic growth it can be classified into labor saving capital saving or neutral in the last we have studied how the production analysis can be extended when firms are producing more than one product